So the SPICE project is a publicly funded UK science initiative to look at the feasibility of stratospheric aerosol injection. It's in three parts. The first part is uh, determining which particle one might use opposite the idea that we know what sulfate aerosols from volcanoes do. The second part is delivery mechanisms, particularly we were focusing on a tethered balloon system, including a, a small scale outdoor experiment. And the third part is on impacts, impacts on rainfall, temperature, ozone, etc. So the decision was taken in May 2012 to cancel a small part of the SPICE project, namely the outdoor experiment. This involved lofting a tethered balloon to one kilometre's altitude and pumping two bath loads of water up a pipe and then spraying it out. The reason we wanted to do this was to test the way the balloon and the pipe interacted with, with each other dynamically. And um, it was a difficult decision that we agonised over. I, I want to emphasise firstly, it was a decision that the SPICE project themselves took. Uh, and the three reasons we gave for um, for cancelling this part of the project were, firstly, we were very worried about the lack of governance around these sorts of experiments. And we felt that although we were being responsible and carefully monitored, it might open the door to other people to do things we didn't really like. Secondly, um, the... The process of deciding whether or not the uh, experiment was appropriate, particularly in a social context, took a long time. And it got to the point where actually the experiment itself became less meaningful because it was designed to inform modelling at a later date. And thirdly, and I suppose honestly most significantly, then we found a potential conflict of interest around a patent that wasn't really efficiently communicated to the team until about a year into the project. And actually that made us quite uncomfortable because it wasn't clear who owned this particular technology. And actually that turned out to be rather important. It's often said that uh, green groups had great influence over that decision. And while I'm mindful of their opinions and their opinions matter to me, I can say categorically that it was a decision that the SPICE project made themselves without pressure from those groups and, and actually to suggest otherwise does a disservice to the process and the agonizing uh, that we went through and, and it, it really was a question of not what the SPICE project represented but actually what it would then allow other people to do uh, in terms of governance and in terms of ownership. So I think I'm going to break this answer into three parts. The first part is, is what we've actually found out from the project itself. And I, I would suggest that um, the, the key messages are that uh, some particles actually have quite unusual and unanticipated effects on ozone chemistry, which we're still working on. But it's quite clear that actually that's going to be uh, difficult and, and definitely we're going to need to know that. Um, I think from the engineering perspective, I think it's clear that the tethered balloon system is more challenging than we'd uh, initially appreciate it, which is quite interesting. And I think the key parts of the modeling part of the uh, project are probably that if you don't get it right, particularly this is a paper by Jim Haywood and others, uh, and you only, for example, cool half the planet, um, the the effects are, are, are quite profound, particularly on rainfall. And so I, I think the SPICE project has suggested that, although I think we knew this in the first place, actually, that um, SRM geoengineering with aerosols is, is fraught with, with difficulty. Secondly, I would suggest that in these interdisciplinary type problems where you have multiple, um, uh, you, you have various different uh, disciplines contributing to a, to a project, actually the, the time it takes to develop a lingua franca shouldn't be underestimated either. So actually just talking to engineers, social scientists, uh, natural scientists, physical scientists, about the, the concepts and ideas around climate engineering is actually rather difficult because everybody approaches it from a different perspective with, with a different context and a different language. And thirdly, I think that the, the, the key lesson around communication is that you can't expect to control the narrative. There, there will be um, people in the public, people in NGOs, and particularly people in the media that actually 
want a message to come out a certain way. Now, this was brought home to me when we undertook the, um, the, the, the first of the press conferences that we, that we spoke about SPICE. And I was asked lots of different questions by different members, uh, different representatives of different newspapers. And actually, it was quite easy to tell without knowing them which newspaper they wrote for. So the Guardian asked me lots of questions about environment and impacts. The Times asked me lots of very heavy questions about politics. And then at the end, a young lady from the Daily Mail asked me who was paying for it. Was it taxpayers' money? Uh, entirely predictably, actually. So it, I think everybody has strong opinions about climate engineering. Those opinions are valid. But I don't think as a scientist you should expect or even want to be able to control how people perceive it. I think you've just got to put information out there and let, and let people decide for themselves. Thank you.